Hello everybody. I hope you are having a fantastic day. A couple of months ago, I built up this bad boy. This is an Atari 16 game on one cartridge PCB and it is very sweet. You basically solder uh, an EEPROM and a 74LS04 logic chip and a couple of resistors and some dip switches and then all of a sudden you've got 16 different games as you flip the switches in different orientations it loads its own game and to me that was an elementary school dream but as much as i love this cartridge there were two things that i didn't like about it and so we're going to solve both of those right now now i want to start off by saying even if you don't care about atari i think there's some interesting things in this video that we're going to talk about so i encourage you to stick around as i show you this this looks very identical except the numbers are reversed it is a 4x16 kilobyte cartridge and uh, the layout is slightly different and we're going to talk about that because that's interesting in and of itself now one of the things i found as i was going through the collection of games that i legally own in order to put them on this rom is that the vast majority of the really good games the kind of later games were bigger than four kilobytes, which meant that I couldn't put them on this cartridge. The second thing that I didn't really love about it is although 16 games seems kind of awesome, it is a lot to kind of switch through and to try to, uh, you know, keep sheets around or put big old stickers on the cartridge so that you know, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, you know, that kind of thing. Um, getting the jumpers in the right position or the dip switches in the right position. And so this one actually holding four bigger games any game up to 16 kilobytes i think is actually going to be an advantage um my childhood my father's passed away and one of my best memories of my childhood with my dad was playing a baseball game on the atari that um will not fit on a four kilobyte cartridge and so i'm really looking forward to being able to make this 16 kilobyte one so that i can play that game and summer games and you know things like that that i used to play as a kid so let's take a look at the boards themselves. Uh, this one obviously needed four dip switches and this one only needs two because there's only four total positions. This one needed four resistors. This one uses two. They both use the same um, ROM. Actually, there is another resistor down here. Uh, so it's three versus four resistors. Um, but the big difference is this chip right here. And I've got some interesting thoughts about that chip. So I mentioned at the beginning of the video that this uses a 74LS04 chip and you all know that i am just fascinated with 74 series chips and you can see that a board like this weird um circuit board here is just filled with chips that start with 74 in the names you got an 08 you got a 32 and there's just all kinds of logic chips and these were basically simple logic circuits um each ic was an and gate or a quad and gate or a nor gate or you know some kind of interesting chip thing and they may only be using one or two of the things on there and even though it has four and but you know these were kind of the building blocks of the electronic world so as technology progressed alongside these 74 ls chips you began to see these pal chips these pal chips and these were programmable array logic and people use different names so don't come at me with the names but uh these are programmable chips and the ideas were as i said sometimes you might use only half of what one of these chips does with these programmable logic chips they could come in there and say hey we want uh two and gates and a nor gate and an xor gate in this configuration we want to make sure they're on this side of the board because that allows us to do our traces better and stuff like that so they began to be able to, to get rid of some of the chips and combine them and make things more densely populated because they could actually configure these chips how they wanted and i don't know if you're picking up what i'm putting down but we're starting to to progress in the industry toward the cplds and the fpga so you know we have logic arrays and then we have programmable logic arrays and then this board here takes that one step further with a gate array or a general array logic chip that I can actually program myself. I don't need to have it done at the factory and I can put this thing in my EEPROM programmer and I can put a hex file in there and I can sit there and I can decide exactly how I want my own personal logic chip to be configured. So through these boards on my desk, you can kind of see the evolution of computing, at least in the IC age, from logic array to programmable logic array to a gate uh, a, a home programmable gate array logic to a complex logic device 
complex programmable logic device, CPLD, into what rules the world now, which is FPGA, which is Field Programmable Gate Array. And so this is the granddaddy of the FPGA that rules the world right now. Normally I kind of speed through the, uh, the soldering process, but I figured unless it gets extremely boring, I'll just talk to you guys while I'm doing it here. Um, I've set the socket in for the 28 pin, just kind of set it in there. Um, one of the things to note about this board, if you make it yourself, is that they are um, going opposite directions. So a lot of times you just kind of assume that the sockets are all going the same direction and they are not in this board. Um, I want to talk about this. This project is sponsored by PCB Way. That's where I get all my PCBs, um, the ones that I buy, the ones that they give me. Uh, absolutely fantastic company. And while I'm talking about them, this is another project that is designed by the absolute legend C64 Istanbul. Um, I've talked about him before, but if you go on PCB Way's shared projects um he is very what you would call prolific and uh he makes a lot of projects and he makes them available for free they tend to be in the retro arena so things for commodores and amigas and you know just all kinds of old computers and fun adapters and things like that um things that would just cost you a lot of money to buy and he doesn't charge for any of it he puts a lot of time into it his stuff has really nice designs and uh, I think that PCB Way Shared Projects is just one of the absolute coolest um, things out there because you can just go on there and pick a project. And, you know, I design some boards occasionally and stuff like that, but it's really cool to just be able to go on there and find some other projects. Um, and so C64 Istanbul is awesome. And uh, PCB Way is awesome for sponsoring this video. And like, I'm amazed. Um, as a YouTuber, like I'm just amazed at how many um, YouTube channels they support. And I mean, obviously I'm small potatoes in that genre, um, but it's just really cool that they keep a lot of the maker community afloat. You know, like when I do these videos, I'm taking off from my day job. Um, I have enough work that I could basically code as much as I want. Um, and so to make a video, you know, I'm not doing it for the money, obviously, but to make a video, I am stopping doing my regular job. This isn't going to last very long. I am stopping doing my regular job so that I can do this. And it takes a lot of time to order the parts and occasionally like I'll order a wrong part or something like that. And that just all takes time. And, um, PCB way, like, I'll tell you this, I don't want to get into the finances and stuff like that, but they definitely pay more than Google. Um, you know, Google doesn't give us jack for the amount of videos, uh, you know, video ad revenue and stuff like that. So I would guess that it's probably, in terms of profitability, I would guess that it's probably PCBWay.com on an average month and then Amazon, then Google. Um, so, I mean, the Google money is like, it's almost to the point where it's annoying because I just have to do another tax document for the stupid google ad revenue like it's not much um and so you know i mean if i was some kind of fashion blogger or something like that maybe i'd do more on that but just as a small time electronic youtuber um you know google does everything they can to make it not worth doing a youtube channel and so you know i think you should be concerned for your creators for the people who come out here and make these videos um i don't have a patreon i don't have a patreon um for my software i don't have a patreon for um for the creative stuff and you know so this is what i get from it and that's fine like i'm i'm very happy with that but it's uh the youtube community as a whole is really propped up by pcb way and the people who um you know who they support so i mean if you it, i'll just say this if pcb way decided today that they were going to stop sponsoring you know any channel with less than a hundred thousand subscribers like your content would um just it would go down a lot just because it would be so discouraging to the people who um do this and i mean again i'm not getting rich off pcb way i lose money making these videos i mean i like these videos yeah, like I lose money on YouTube pretty easy, even on the videos I'm paid to make. But I genuinely enjoy it. And I have this stuff in my brain. Like I have these projects that just, you know, I was a kid in the 80s and I had an Atari and it's just kind of fun for me. And, um, you know, right now I'm not really in a place where I would just go out and buy an Atari cartridge like this. But, you know, it gets me off the keyboard. It gets me to come over here and play with it and talk to you guys and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and these cartridges, like 
I give this kind of stuff out locally a lot um, to people that you know come by my shop and stuff like that. Uh, these things, another thing that make these things great is if you know you come across any like homebrew Atari games, or even if you're a homebrew uh, game programmer, um, you can make your own cartridge and so you make the game and you could be playing it on an emulator but you also could come over here and um play it on a real cartridge and there's something too i'm sure when you do that kind of stuff that just makes it feel kind of more legit to play your game on some kind of actual hardware um so we're going to go ahead and tack these in so um I'm still trying to find my way as a YouTuber. Uh, I don't really consider myself a YouTuber, but uh, I'm always in this thing where I, like, part of me would love to walk away from YouTube and all that stuff, but I do just, I have projects in my brain that I want to get out there and, you know, I want to share them with the world and I don't really care about the money of YouTube and stuff like that. So it's kind of a, a working thing, but I, I've, I'm learning to put YouTube in its place and that's one of the reasons why the vast majority of my videos now are mailbags and um, you know and PCB Way videos because they're the mailbags for me are fun. I'm ordering this stuff anyway primarily because of the PCB Way videos, and uh, you know it gives me an opportunity to share it. I really um, watching Julian Eilet's videos, his old post bag videos, which I don't think he's done one in two years, which is a travesty. Uh, watching his videos was kind of what got me into. Just realizing the breadth of the electronics world, you know, I, I was living in Alaska and I didn't really know um, anything about Arduino, so I bought my first starter kit and I came across him. And I think Pile of Stuff was not long after that I came across him, which he's a legend too. Um, if you're not subscribed to him, you need to be subscribed to him. He just has some very enjoyable videos. Um, but um, watching those videos, like yeah, they've cost me a lot of money, but they've also just shown me. You know, there's just no way that I would know that some of these things exist. Like, one of the things I want to buy, I want to buy a Variac. I'm um, doing a lot of stuff with retro computers, and I need odd amounts of AC voltage. And, you know, like, you watch... I had seen them before, but didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to what they did, but a pile of stuff got one in the mailbag video, and he might have done a review about it, and I'm like, yeah, I need that on my desk. Um, and just stuff like that. Like, you learn about that stuff, and you learn about what's out there, and... Um, there are people on YouTube who tear things apart that you wouldn't have the, the um, you know, courage to tear apart. Like somebody asked me if I would tear apart my Ryobi, um, uh, what is it, inverter that I just got. And it's like, mm, can't really tear that apart. Like I, that inverter is here in case I get a hurricane. And, uh, you know, I don't want to break any factory seals on that thing and have it not work when I need it because I tore it apart. Um, so I I thank the good Lord that there are people who are willing to do that stuff for me. I do some teardowns, but generally on stuff that's broken or that I just don't care about. So, um, so as you can see, I mean, there's nothing very complicated about these boards. Um, I normally do have my uh, fume extractor on, but it's kind of loud, so I'm getting more fumes than I normally would get. But uh, yeah, nothing very complicated about this thing. It just goes together nice. It's a relaxing project. Um, Obviously, talking and soldering, I'm probably not doing as good of a job as I normally would. But, um, you know, it's just a nice kind of relaxing little build. And what I like about it, you don't have to socket these chips. But, um, you know, the GAL chip especially, like once you program that, you're probably done with it. Unless you just want to pull it for a different project. But um, if I give these away, so what I tend to do is if I give these away, I build a socketed one. Um, and then I'll probably not socket the gal chips on the ones that i give away so yeah i don't know let me know in the comments if you like uh you know i thing is i'm such a short attention span person i watch youtube and, and i'm guessing it's the algorithm kind of blessing things but like i just can't watch 30 minute videos where they're just you know clickbait and they're make you wait 16 minutes to tell you what the thumbnail was talking about and usually has nothing to do with the thumbnail talking about so i tend to like shorter videos um but I mean, for me, it's not really that much harder <laughs> editing this one than it would be if I had just sped up the footage and stuff. So, um, yeah, so I am just kind of here talking to you. I've also kicked around doing some live streams. I feel like I'd be the kind of person who would like doing live streams. Of course, I may say something stupid, um, but I mean, it's kind of hard to cancel you if you're never really in to begin with. <laughs> So I always joke around like I think people like my channel, but I'm I'm nobody's favorite and that's okay with me Like I just uh, you know, I'm just kind of here I put stuff out for the fun of it and uh, I hope you like watching it if you don't like 
you know, you probably wouldn't be here at this point in the video. Um, so what we're going to do next is I'm going to, I think I'm about done. I'm going to, you know, give a check, make sure everything's on there in the right direction and stuff like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the computer and we are going to program both the gal chip and the EEPROM. Now the EEPROM, I'm not going to give a lot of instructions on that because I made another video on the other size uh, version of this. And so um, when it comes to that one, uh, you know, just look at the instructions for the other video. It'll be the same. I do have to put this in. Um, it's kind of cool. Like even C64, like he did, he made two different size versions of this dip switch thing. So if, uh, you know, if you have the taller ones or the shorter ones, or if you want to use jumpers instead of dip switches, like it's totally up to you. You do want to solder these kind of quick because they're plastic and what happens is you melt the insides of them. So uh, you're kind of better off hitting it and going back and fixing it. If, it. if you don't get it right the first time, like let it go and come back and hit it again. Um, so what we're going to do then after this is we're going to go over there and I'm going to drop the JED file on the uh, GAL chip and we're going to program that. And I'm going to drop a ROM file on the ROM chip and we will plug this bad boy in. So it's funny, I absolutely knew before the video started that I was going to solder these dip switches on the wrong side. You know, it's one of those things, talking and soldering at the same time does not always mix. Um, but no big deal. I used the Hacko desoldering gun to take the thing off and I'm just going to reverse these. Um, the main reason why you want it this way is one, the switches will line up. Um, one will be one and two will be two, which isn't really that big of a deal. Um, but if you 3D print a case, it expects the switches to be on the proper side, go figure. So um, we're going to put them on the proper side. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of this gaffer tape that I primarily use for um, covering these things. I really need to just get little round stickers. Uh, but I'm going to cover the little window on my EEPROM. And the notch goes over here to the right. We're going to get that wire scrap out of there. I don't feel like that would be very helpful. And let's see, are we lined up enough or we need squeezy squeezy? Not bad, not bad. Push. Okay, there we go. And we've got our gal pal over here. And looks pretty good. There we go. Now, of course, um, I 3D printed a case for it. Um, so this is going to go here. And then I don't remember, finally, I need to find the other side. I think this will actually only go in one way. Um, this is kind of what locks the cartridge in, this little piece here. So, um, and it also prevents you from plugging the thing in upside down, which to me is the main reason for using these things in a case. Uh, you absolutely can plug them in backwards the other way. So I'm going to make sure if that doesn't fit right, then we know we did it wrong, but I think that's right. I really wasn't expecting this case to grab a hold so well when I uh, put it together. Um, as you can see, I've got the red thing down here. My thought was I was going to put a red LED or something like that tapping in on the VCC, um, but I figured there'd be somebody telling me how stupid of an idea that was and how I was gonna rip the space-time continuum and break all the legacy Ataris in the world by doing that. So I just decided not to. But if you've made it this far in the comments, let me know if you think I should have put a red LED in there. I mean, you've got clear PLA, I have no idea what else to do with it. Um, so I thought it'd be kind of cool to do that. But anyway, so these are um, my assortment of metric screws from amazon love these things you know i bought them just kind of on a whim and uh, you may have seen a mailbag where i had like 50 different kinds of screws um i just find myself using this stuff all the time and it just gives it kind of a nice little look so this is a an m3 screw that i'm putting in with a two millimeter allen here it is my video capture setup doesn't like me turning analog devices on and off real fast so i'm just going to go ahead and leave it and uh, record the screen this way but this is the thing i think it looks pretty slick um i actually made two of them i haven't finished 3d printing my second cover yet but um i figured maybe we could play around with it but this is the game i wanted or at least it's real close to it i think the one i played was slightly different so i'll have to kind of tinker around with it um fun story when i was a kid uh, my dad and i would play this all the time and uh one day we were pretty evenly matched but one day i decided to rtfm and uh saw that if you hit the 
button and push the joystick forward, that was a power swing. So, you know, after tending to go back and forth um, on most of our games at night before I went to bed, um, I figured out how to do a power swing and uh, I just started kicking his butt for like, you know, a bunch of games in a row until he finally noticed that I was doing something different and basically cheating him. So, uh, just kind of a fun memory. But um, anyway, so this thing, you can just come in here and I don't know what this game is. I think it's uh, Summer Games. Yeah, Summer Games. So you take that one, turn the uh, switch in that position, you get Summer Games. And then uh, I think that might be Winter Games. Winter Games. And uh, yeah, so anyway, I mean, there's just all kinds of cool games on here. Um, you know, coolish games for the 80s. So uh, let me turn the volume down a little bit. One thing that's just really funny is this game is like really slow, but they still like make you go through all the motions. So like, watch this. I'll hit the thing. And like, you have to sit there and wait for these people to like all get out to the field. And then like you have to wait for the batter to get up to the box i mean this is why people of my generation have more patience uh for stuff like this and more of a detention span because like we had to watch this stupid guy walk up at six frames a second um oh yeah so oh oh no got out i don't know how that was an out they just uh, in this version they kind of just determined that you're out um like i said i don't think this is the same exact one i had the one i had um there was actually no shortstop the second baseman stood that's yeah, terrible the second baseman um basically stood on second base so each person stood on their own base and you did a little more fielding so i'm gonna have to track down that game but um yeah this is just this this really lame baseball reminds me of uh you know of my childhood so um anyway i think this has a lot of potential um i'm gonna be digging up some more fun games and putting them on here so like that but uh, i do want to thank you guys for watching i want to thank pcb way for sponsoring this video and um for c64 istanbul for designing such a cool thing and just giving it away and uh we live in a really cool world with people like that so hey thanks for watching have a great day